Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. This time out, an incredible solution for controlling the volume of your amplifiers on stage and in the studio. Let's get started. Today we're checking out the Tone King Iron Man 2, a very versatile solution for controlling the volume of your amplifiers. I'll be using two different amps to demonstrate the Iron Man 2 today. I've got a Marshall 1959 HW. This particular 1959 HW came from the factory equipped with KT66 power tubes. It's an incredible sounding amplifier, but it's super loud. When you crank it up, you can hardly stay in the room with it. I've also got a Friedman Buxom Betty, which is a 50 watt amplifier with no master volume control. Also a very loud amplifier, and to get the tone out of it, you really need to crank it up. So the Iron Man 2 is a great solution for working with it. Let's take a tour of the Iron Man 2, discuss how it works, and listen to how it sounds. With amplifiers like the Marshall and the Friedman behind me, there's no master volume control. You really have to crank them up to get the tone out of it that you want, and they become extremely loud when you do that. The Iron Man 2 allows you to notch that volume back, get it to where it's controllable so you can use it at home, in the studio, and on stage. And it uses unique technology to accomplish this, very different from the way that other attenuators work. First of all, the Iron Man 2 is a reactive load. This means that the amplifier sees it basically the same way that it sees a speaker. The impedance of a speaker changes depending on the frequency, so you might have 8 ohms at one particular frequency, at a higher frequency you might get 60 ohms, or even higher than that depending on what's happening with the speaker. The amplifier sees that changing, and the way it responds affects the tone coming from the amplifier and how it feels as well. With a traditional attenuator that simply uses resistors, the attenuator always looks the same to the amplifier, it never changes, and so it doesn't feel quite the same and it doesn't sound as authentic as it does when you just have the amp plugged straight into the speaker cabinet. The Iron Man 2 uses a different approach. It has transformers inside, and the volume steps are different taps on those transformers. Now this accomplishes two things for us. First of all, it sounds great, it's very transparent sonically. But second of all, when you're using resistors to attenuate the amplifier, that can actually become part of the load that the amplifier sees and it changes the tone of the amplifier. With transformers, we don't have that problem. So this technology gives us a different approach that responds extremely well. Even with the volume knocked way down, it still sounds, and just as importantly, feels like you're playing straight through your amplifier into a speaker. Using the Iron Man 2 is very simple. Just hook it up between your amplifier and your speaker and set the impedances correctly on the back panel. We have an impedance setting for the amplifier, which you match to the amplifier's output impedance. Then we have a second impedance control that matches the impedance of the speaker cabinet back to the Iron Man 2. Now this allows you to very accurately dial things in, but it also allows you to use the Iron Man 2 as an impedance transformer. So if you're using a 4 ohm cabinet, but your amplifier only supports 16 ohms, you can use the Iron Man 2 to make those two compatible. Very cool feature. On the front panel, the large rotary control sets our volume, and there are actually three ranges here. When we're in low range with this switch, we range from minus 6 dB down to minus 38 dB. Now minus 38 dB is very quiet compared to the unattenuated signal. And in fact, at the minus 38 dB setting, you can unplug your speaker cabinet and use this as a dummy load box. When we move this switch to the high position, we have from minus 3 dB down to minus 35 dB. So it's slightly louder, gives you more options for dialing in exactly the volume that you want. Our third option can be accessed either using a front panel switch, the solo switch, or using a foot switch connected to the back panel. This solo switch jumps us up by 3 dB when we're in the high range on the dial, and jumps us up by 6 dB when we're in the low range. So you can use this to help your solos jump out, or to preset two different rhythm levels when you're playing. To give you an idea of how those different ranges affect the volume that's coming out of the amplifier, we'll set it to low range. I'm on the second notch here. So this takes us down to minus 35 dB. <laughs> When we switch to high range, we jump up by 3 dB, and when we hit the solo switch, 
the volume increases by another 3 dB. So this gives you three different levels you can work with right from the front panel without even changing the rotary control. The important thing to notice there is that the tone really isn't changing. From the low range to the solo range, the sound stays exactly the same and the feel stays exactly the same, which is just as important. The only thing that's really changing is how the speaker cabinet is responding. When you drive a speaker cabinet harder, the resonances start to come out, you hear different things out of the speaker, so that changes a little bit and there's nothing you can do about that with an attenuator, it's just part of the equation. But the tone itself that's coming straight out of the Iron Man 2 is staying very consistent no matter what level we're attenuating. For shaping the sound, we have a presence switch. Now I'm using P90s, so I have a bit of the top end knocked off, but let's listen to the three different positions. Here's what the presence control at zero dB. Here's minus three dB. And here's at minus six. So if you have an extremely bright amplifier, you're using single coils, you can knock back a little bit of that harsh top end using this presence control. There are two more very useful features built into the Iron Man 2. The first is it has a line output on a quarter inch jack. Now you can set this to either be line level or you can set it to be at microphone level. Now this allows you to route the output from the Iron Man 2 straight into a recording console, or in our case, straight into our Zoom recorder, or you could route it into an effects box and do a wet dry rig. It's a very easy way to chain amplifiers together. Finally, we have a DI output. And again, this can feed straight into your console, or in our case, straight into the Zoom recorders. And this does have analog speaker emulation. There are two different settings for that. There's a setting where the microphone would be on the edge of the cone, and one where it's right on the cone itself. So let's listen to that now. I've got it set to where it's on the cone of the speaker. <laughs> And now I'll switch to the setting that emulates the edge of the speaker cone. The Iron Man 2 is rated for amplifiers up to 100 watts of power, which is basically what we're putting out with this 1959 HW, this 100 watt amplifier equipped with KT66s. But it'll also work with lower powered amplifiers as well. Let's switch over to the 50 watt Friedman Bucks and Betty and hear what that sounds like. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Tone King Iron Man 2. It's a great solution for controlling the volume of your amplifiers, but at the same time gives you a lot of useful features as well. It's a great tool for home, rehearsal, studio, and stage. Thanks for joining me for Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll have more guitars, more amps, more effects. We'll be making lots of music. I'm Mitch Gallagher.